In a recent address to the National Press Club, Grattan Institute Chief Executive Danielle would warn that the upcoming budget risks playing footsies with the big social and fiscal challenges if it takes a cautious route rather than embracing a bolder strategy which tackles issues around cost of living and poverty. In this video, we'll explore the bold policies the Grattan Institute have presented that, if adopted, would go some way to tackling the nation's current economic and social challenges. Treasurer Jim Chalmers has said that the government is aiming to address inflation and cost of living pressures through investment in the supply side of the economy. But what exactly does Grattan Institute's Danielle would say is needed, if we are to make a meaningful impact in terms of economic and social reform? Wood has proposed a number of bold strategies, beginning with the redesign of Stage 3 tax cuts, which were abolished by the Morrison government. Keeping the 37% tax bracket would save about $8 billion a year and offset the fiscal and inflationary impacts of a job seeker rise. The Institute also suggests winding back superannuation tax concessions, reducing the capital gains tax discount, limiting negative gearing and implementing a minimum tax on trust distributions. This, they say, could raise more than $20 billion per year. The government also has a responsibility, according to the Institute, to increase low-income payments. This includes youth allowance and job seeker payments, and increasing pay in the care sector. Removing the activity test for childcare is also a suggestion, in order to help improve women's participation in the workforce. When it comes to solving the housing crisis, Wood recommends offering incentive payments to state governments to add new housing supply. The barrier to this, according to the Institute, is often overzealous planning restrictions in inner and middle ring suburbs, and offering incentives would be an investment in long-term social and economic outcomes. Unfortunately, it looks likely that the government will take a more cautious route and adopt lower-cost proposals. This risks only playing footsies with the big social and fiscal challenges, according to Wood, and although it may make some things better, ultimately it is unlikely to result in meaningful reform. It is clear, then, that the upcoming budget needs to embrace bold proposals if we are to meaningfully address issues surrounding cost of living, poverty, inequality and Australia's wider economic challenges, after all, these are pressing issues that need to be addressed. Let's hope the government listens to the Grattan Institute, and implements bold policies to make positive change in the nation.